Welcome to At the Coolidge. Today we're talking about Alan Ball's first directorial effort and a film he also wrote called Towelhead. And I'm speaking with Nina La Negra once again, mother founder of the Foxbury Media Institute and Art is Life Itself every Thursday at the Haley House. There you go. And also, you've done radio, you've taught, you've done a number of different things, and you have a daughter. I have two daughters. Two daughters. And one of them came to see this film last night. Yes, she did. Which is interesting. The film is about um, uh, a girl who moves in with her father. He's from the Middle East. And she's seduced by the next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it has a tone of comedy. It's set in Texas. And I think it's a very controlled film. I think the film takes itself very seriously, although it has an edge of comedy to it. And uh, as I was saying with the person that I saw with who has a 13-year-old daughter, how can you be laughing at this? And I said, he goes, what do you mean? I go, isn't your daughter 13? And he goes, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny to a point. Mm. I find it disturbing. I uh, found it disturbing. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And challenging. And interesting. I found it a lot of different things. Yeah. But I, I, I think that back to what you said to introduce it, that this 13-year-old girl didn't move in with her father. She was sent, sent to, to live with her father. And it's in the late 80s as well, yeah. during the first Gulf War. Right. And um, With Papa Bush. Right, Papa Bush. And he's, uh, he's Iraqi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, who's Iraqi? Isn't the father? No, he's Lebanese. Lebanese, I'm sorry. He's Lebanese. Lebanese. Right, right, the but Lebanese, right. it, they're, they're all seen as all the same. Right. Lebanese, mm -hmm. Iraqi, Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. Towelheads. And Towelheads is the name of the book from which it's adapted. And interestingly, if you look up the book, you'll see that that wasn't the working title. Mm. Um, the, the original title was something, you know, Secrets That We Keep or Things That You Don't Talk About or something. They hated the title. They couldn't think of a title. They went through numerous titles. And in the end, it was Warner Brothers who said, well, we'll release this film, we'll help you with this film, finance it, whatever they did with it, if you call it Towelhead. Mm. So, but I find that the, the racism in it has layers. Yes. And uh, it, it's not necessarily even the main topic. Well, I don't know. I, I think it, it drives the story a lot. I, I think mm -hmm. a lot of the things that happened to Jazeera happened because of her mixed parentage, mm -hmm. um, happened because of her uh, ethnic background of her father being Lebanese and she being half Lebanese. You know, I, I, I think that that drives a lot of the story. So it, it might be subtle in that every 15 minutes somebody isn't calling her towelhead, but, but certainly um, there's enough of that in the film so you get the picture of what it's like in Houston, Texas to be uh, visibly different I mean, the, the Latina woman that was in the bathroom thought she was Latina and right. started speaking to her in Spanish. So your and, parents and said, your parents don't Spanish speak Spanish, Spanish at home? She said, no. And, and did, didn't even, and thought, oh, well, you know, because they're trying to be American, so they're not speaking to you in Spanish. And, and, and it's like, no, I, I don't have anything to do with speaking Spanish. And the secondary story where she's going out with a, uh, you know, a black adolescent boy yes. and her father. Yes. Forbids it. That's right. Because and, and it would be about shameful. Yeah. It'd be shameful for her to be uh, seen dating uh, a young black male, and and no one else in the picture seemed to think that that was a problem, except for the father. The father's Greek girlfriend, who looked like a porno star, uh, she didn't have a problem with it. Um, the mother went along with the father. The mother was dating a black man well, and sent the postcard. Eventually, in. that that happened later, though, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Right. So, so yeah. But I mean, the, the, there was. I thought there was a lot of racism in the film that mm -hmm. was brought mm -hmm. to light and made one think. And my daughter pointed out um, some interesting um, things about um, Jazeera, saying that she was just a product of her environment. Look at her parents. <laughs> Incredibly vain, both parents just, mm -hmm. yeah, narcissist, basically. Well, my daughter called them psychotic, but, <laughs> but, okay. but, but I, I mean, they, they really were trapped in their own little worlds and didn't have time for their daughter mm -hmm. and what she might have experienced. And as I sat there watching it with my daughter, who had some similar type experiences because being a product of divorce, 
I also thought about my own childhood and growing up here in Massachusetts and the psychotic racism that I encountered in the suburbs of um, Massachusetts and th that my parents had no conception of what it was that myself and my brothers were going through. Mm. And so I, I related to that a, a lot, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and then to live next door to a pedophile who on some level because of the neglect of the daughter um, he was seen as some type of savior or boyfriend or companion for well, the, Jazeera. Yeah, and, and, and her whole identity is, I mean, it's a coming-of-age story in the end, mm -hmm. in, in a major, major way, because there's even a, a moment at the end, which I found, I won't say what it is, but it, it's, it's a very uplifting moment in the end of the film. Just People should just wait it out. Did you, did you like this ending? Um, I, 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 I thought it was good. I mean, I, I always, you don't want me to say what the ending is, no, but, well, but I, I thought it was... Not that it impacts the plot at all, really. It, it's a birth scene. A birth scene. Yeah. I, I love birthing scenes, and I, having <laughs> experienced um, birth up close and personal with my grandson and helping to participate in his birth, I think that everyone should experience uh, birthing. So. Which is the end of her coming of age, where mm -hmm. she starts in total sexual confusion. I mean, the, I, there's no place for identity formation mm -hmm. in this 13-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. We can't get it from her friends. She can't get it from her parents. She's having feelings of sexuality. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and they're being manipulated and taken advantage of by this pedophile. Well, and by the society, by the culture. By the society. I mean, I, and point. I think the pedophile is just the, the latest version of the societal manipulation. Mm. And, and I look at that, and I, and I have a lot of empathy for young girls. Yeah. You know, I, I being uh, always a girl, but now a woman. And, and then having two daughters, and, and then working with young people, working with young women in particular, and, and understanding that trying to identify oneself uh, sexually, trying to identify oneself racially, ethnically, you know, and just trying to be your own person. And I thought the pregnant neighbor, um, I can't remember her name, the actress. Tony Collette. Tony Collette. Collette. She Tony was Collette. absolutely, I thought it was spectacular mm -hmm. that this young white couple that lived next door mm -hmm. uh, in between, on the other side of the pedophile, I guess it was, that they, uh, they had just come back from the Middle East, and that the husband spoke Arabic, yeah. and he laid it on the father and th th put him in check. And I thought do that was do not dishonor my wife. You know, That's all we had to say to no, her father. do not disrespect. Right, disrespect. Disrespect. My... And 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 I thought that was fabulous, Tim, because mm. it w what it did because you had the white man as the villain, and then you had the white man as the hero, mm -hmm. and then uh, well, I won't give the whole plot away, but <laughs> but why not? No, oh, why not? <laughs> Well, I don't know that there's that much to, to give away. There's not like the, some great moment where you're gonna, things are going to turn. Well, well th I thought there was a great moment. I thought the father redeemed himself. Okay. All Finally, right. in the end, he redeemed himself. In the very last moment of Yeah, the movie. just when you thought that there was no hope. <laughs> <Yeah>. You know, <laughs> well, this is Hollywood, you know. They had to save him in the end. Yeah. But, but I thought it was good that they redeemed him because, to me, it was kind of stereotypical that you had this uh, 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 Arabic descent uh, uh, man, Lebanese man, who uh, did did not identify with his culture, except in some remote way with his mother, mm -hmm. and 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 then uh, hated Saddam and hated Iraq and hated this and hated and red, white, and blue, and he wanted to show the reservist pedophile that he was more red, white, and blue than he was. And those beautiful was. camera crane shots where they pull in the driveway and the camera cranes up like this, so you're looking down from the top of the American flag. Yeah, 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 that was like so much brainwash. But again, I think that that was important to see that in the context of all this uh, uh, coming of age sexuality, yeah. mm -hmm. the isolation, the... And, and as you were talking about, this, this, the identity formation through the media is mm -hmm. a huge part of that. She's reading mm -hmm. Playboy. Well, I think it was worse than Playboy. Playboy was mild in comparison with she was having More like fantasies. Penthouse. <laughs> yeah, and then she was yeah. having fantasies of being a media product for her exterior. Yeah. Right, for her beauty. 